162 days with the iPhone 15 Pro that gives you time to try a bunch of apps. Here are some of the apps that work best with my lifestyle. And who knows, there may be something for you. I'm using the iPhone 15 Pro in the 128 gig version. In this video, I do want to cover some of my favorite apps that I use with my iPhone 15 Pro. There are quite a few apps I want to talk about, all in different categories, creativity, music, health, productivity, and I thought the best way to do that would be to take you along with me. So welcome to a day in my life. As for the first app, we have the Blackmagic Camera app. The Blackmagic Camera app unlocks the full power to your phone's camera. With access to advanced settings such as video and audio monitoring, industry standard recording formats including Apple ProRes, and ability to record all those professional formats right into your phone with the 128 gig model of the iPhone 15 Pro is a huge bonus with this app. You guys may know that with the 128 gig models, you can only record ProRes footage onto an SSD rather than into the phone itself. Within the main recording screen, you'll find the most important camera controls such as lens selection, frame rate, shutter speed, time code, ISO, white balance, and even audio levels. You name it, it's there. With this app, you're basically able to use your phone camera like a professional camera. As I scroll through the menus, you can see how much you can do with this app. But I do have to say, my first camera app on the iPhone 15 Pro is not the Blackmagic camera app. It's actually the built-in camera app itself. See, sometimes I don't really care about what the shutter speed is, what the ISO is. And to keep things simple on the go, I just plug in an SSD to my iPhone 15 Pro and record using the native app rather than fiddle around the settings on the go. See, sometimes life is too short to set your shutter speed double your frame rate. And if you guys are not familiar with that saying, setting your shutter speed double your frame rate basically basically allows things to look more realistic and cinematic. But you know, there are some times where I want my footage to look really good and I want to maximize the video quality. That is when Fujifilm comes into play. I've been a long time Fujifilm user and recently I had the privilege to try the Fujifilm X-H2S. The X-H2S is a phenomenal hybrid camera that is great in both photo and video. But when it comes to video, it can do some really good things. Like 6K 10-bit internal video. I've always loved the color depth in the Fujifilm system, but the X-H2S takes it up a notch. I also had the chance to try Fujifilm's two of really nice lenses. The classic 16-55 2.8 walk around lens as well as a stunning 100 to 400 telephoto. If you feel like you need to graduate from smartphone photography or videography, the Fujifilm system may be just for you. And when I'm not filming videos or taking photos, I'm usually watching soccer. I've been deep into Turkish Super League this year. The title race is hot. And also, I decided to make wallpaper packs out of my travel adventures. And for the first one, I released a Scotland edition. If you need some wallpapers, feel free to pick them up. As for first part of the morning, it really helps to do stuff that puts you in the right mindset. And everyone has a thing that puts them in the right mindset. Mine is podcasts and audiobooks. And when it comes to the audiobooks, let's talk about Audible. Based on my user experience, Audible has a great selection of audiobooks. When I'm doing stuff in the morning before I start work, I feel that the content really sticks the most with me. I think because of that, that's why I like longer form content better. And you might be thinking, oh man, this is just another subscription. And I know, I agree with you. For a while, I fell off the audiobook bandwagon. I was still paying for the subscription while not using the app, so I ended up saving some credits. So when I came back to the app, I realized I have so many credits that I can just redeem new books with. Instead of paying for new credits, I just pause my account for now until I run out of credits. If you like books and if you don't have a lot of time to read, Audible is a good option. The spring weather is finally here, just gonna go out for a bit, take a nice walk, take some photos, record some video, and just enjoy the nice weather. I know I talk about the camera performance of the iPhone 15 Pro quite a bit, and I actually have a camera settings video coming soon. Feel free to comment down below all of your iPhone 15 Pro camera questions. See, there are days like these where I just want to carry less with me. I just want to enjoy the moment and capture as I go. This is one of those days, and I'm glad I have my iPhone 15 Pro with me. Even though I do have the 128 gig version of the iPhone 15 Pro, I do have lots of free space on my phone. I am dedicated to better file management this year, and that means not keeping a lot of content on my phone. A lot of people have asked me why I went with the 128 gig version, and the reason is simply that. If I do need to film ProRes, I use the Blackmagic app, 
and then remove the footage off my phone when I'm home. Honestly, leading lines are like the cheat code. Watch this. Had a good walk, captured some cool stuff, and now we're gonna hop back in the car and head over to a cool local coffee shop. I actually edit a lot of my content on my phone, especially for photography. So in just a little bit, I'm gonna show you some of the apps that I use to edit. I'm back in the car, so this gives me the chance to talk about my favorite music platform. I use Spotify when it comes to listening to music or podcasts. I think Apple Music is also good, but I do like the interface of the Spotify better, and I do enjoy the music recommendation system on Spotify. But on the other side, Apple Music does have better sound quality. As for now, I can say I'm happy with Spotify. One of the most popular questions I receive about the iPhone 15 Pro is about the battery life. In my experience, if you don't do a lot of ProRes recording or photography, the battery does okay till the end of the day. And even then, if you're running low, you can always use the low power mode. Coffee looks and tastes great, let's get to editing. For all my main photo editing, I use Adobe apps and products. And on my phone, I use Lightroom Mobile. It's all you need for photo editing. And also, I'm able to use my presets that I've been using for years. You even have the intensity slider for presets. It's great for those who don't want to over edit. The mobile app is quite good and I love that it features masking tools which I use a ton. Lightroom Mobile is great for color adjustments, presets, cropping and even some healing tools. But then there are some other apps that allow you to take your photo editing to the next level. Next on the list we have lens distortions. I have the free version and honestly it's enough for what I do. It's a perfect app to enhance your images. There are lots of light hits to choose from, lots of snow, rain, fog effects. So whatever your image has, for example the image that I'm editing right now naturally has a sunlight hit. So with the app I'm just emphasizing that a tiny bit. It is a good app, it comes in handy, I personally don't use it enough to buy the full version. If you're a photographer and think you would gain a lot of value from this app, feel free to purchase the full version, which gives you more effects to choose from and other editing perks. And as part of editing, before we get into video editing, let's talk about how I choose my music for my videos. And here, let's switch to the next song to give you a hint. I use Epidemic Sound for all my music and sound effects. And they actually have a mobile app allowing you to browse through music, sound effects, and if you make videos, this really helps when you want to plan for a video. You can listen to some music in advance, save it, and use it on your videos when you're editing. Now that we covered royalty free music, let's get into how I do some light video editing on my phone. We have to realize there are lots of good apps. I use CapCut to do very light video editing. Videos that I produce here goes into my Instagram stories and that kind of thing. They're usually 15 to 30 second montages showing what I did on a specific day. Nothing heavy in production, just quick and easy edits. Despite CapCut being a light video editing app, there are lots of features that are super useful. Sound effects, filters, audio importing, voiceover recording. These are really cool things to have just at the tip of your finger. Remember, these are non editing softwares where you have to pay a few hundred dollars to use. CapCut even has HSL sliders for color grading. I mean, that's great. These things are harder to get on a professional video editing software on a computer. So, huge props to these mobile apps for making editing a lot easier. That being said, I still use Final Cut Pro to edit my long form videos, which there has not been a day where I regretted switching from Premiere Pro. Great coffee, great editing session, now it's time to head home. My work schedule does fluctuate each week depending on commitments, but I typically get filming done earlier part of the day, especially in winter to take advantage of the sunlight. Late afternoons, I typically work on emails, script writing and planning, or work on other production stuff that I have going on. I know lots of people use AI tools like Notion to stay organized and in check with what they have to do. I currently only use ChatGPT to make some of my tasks easier for me. Especially in the world of tech when things get really technical, ChatGPT does step in for me when I need to understand things in a simpler manner. There is a lot of talk when it comes to AI and how it's gonna change up 
each industry, especially the creative industry. I personally think there is really nothing to worry about on our end as creatives, especially if you can learn to use these tools to your advantage and use them as an assistant and take your craft to the next level. It's getting to a point where an idea matters more rather than the execution. And where AI comes into my life is sometimes the execution process rather than the idea process itself. And let me know in the comments, do you use AI tools? On days where I have to get filming done, these days fly by and today is one of those days. I forget to eat on days like this. I am committed to a healthier lifestyle and unfortunately food is a big part of that. I use my fitness pal to track my calories. It's great for setting weight goals, macro splits and journaling anything you eat by the amount. And yes, I have Domino's and Wendy's right beside my fitness pal app. Whoops. My favorite thing about the app is the food scanner. There is a huge library of products to log within the app, so there really is no excuse to not log your stuff in. This is a pretty chill evening, finishing off today with some cooking and podcasts. I'm always in a search for a new podcast, so if you got one, let me know. This is my day in the life with my favorite apps on the iPhone 15 Pro. I'm curious if you use any of these apps currently, and if you have app suggestions, do let me know. That is it for me today. Thank you for watching. It has been a pleasure. I'll see you in the next video.